Welcome to another episode of your favorite divorce group, everything real estate, divorce, and you. We take a deep dive into everything. And, you know, we've actually had some listener questions. Um, they've been sending things in, which I love that. Like, interaction is what we want. We want to know what can we, what can we help with. But some of them are kind of funny and quirky. So you guys just go with me for a second. I know we're starting a little. I'm going to set it off a little different today. But we had a question, which I think is fun, and it is um, maybe they just want to get to know us a little bit better. So I'll take it as a compliment. Mm -hmm. But wondering if you were stuck on a deserted island, what is one thing that you'd want to bring? One thing. One thing. So, Jeff, you get to go first. Jeff. One thing you get to bring with you on a deserted island. Well, obviously, for those that know me, I would want to bring cigars. Yeah, now, the question is, if I'm limited to one cigar, I don't know, that might be a problem. I was just but about to ask But if it's cigars, that. plural, it's one thing, but multiple of the same thing, that would be a my go-to. A box go -to. of cigars with the cutter and the lighter inside. I don't even That's need a cutter, but uh, and can't you make a fire on an island somehow? To, to light no it? survivor. Yeah, well, well, I might what need about a cigar or seeds? Like, what, what are cigars you? made from? Like the leaves? Ooh, you can plant you just cigar pick out seeds plants? and grow. Oh, tobacco. There's no such thing as a cigar. Oh, tobacco. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that, I'm not that great. I'm are you going to grow a tobacco plant? <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't think it'll taste as good. I can see it with the hat on and the hoe when he's all digging in the ground. I like it. <laughs> but that would definitely that would definitely be my go to to yeah. you know and okay. I think if I'm I just can't imagine there, Jeff on a deserted island, no. you would just go crazy go after nuts. like, like I, need to to people. I need to be around. I would, I would, like people. the movie, what was it? Castle Rock soccer ball. Away, I don't know. No, I don't no, really watch many ball. movies, ball. so I don't know. Clearly, I didn't see the movie. It was three hours long. I can't watch three hours. I can't sit through in a three hour. What would be if I'm smoking a cigar again? But Shane smoking cigars. I like it. All right, Cece, one thing. So I Wilson. I, I Wilson. Yeah, right. Wilson. I couldn't remember the ball. The, the volleyball. The ball's name was Wilson. Brand. Wilson. He named it Wilson. Oh. He was talking to Wilson because really? it says Wilson. Just not a movie guy. I just talked to my cigars. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. So I would have to say because I'm. I know in the last podcast I brought up my mother, and I'm going to bring her up one more time. We fixed everything with duct tape. I am a duct tape person. If I don't have duct tape, it does not count in my life. If I have a house to fix up, somehow duct tape, I know your muffs for you. Like I, it always solved everything. Our house yeah. flooded. Give me a roll of duct tape and a slip and slide. I made a lazy river. True story. <laughs> True story. Give me duct tape. That's all I needed. Was do, duct do you tape use a traditional a... Um, silver grayish colored duct tape, or do you use those fancy new colors now? No, actually, and did they stick as well? I don't know. I'm okay, so about I like that. the gorilla gr tape. The gorilla, gorilla tape, tape really black. Good. See, he knows me. Ooh, Look at that. Because there's yes. black gorilla tape. In case something ever happens, it's like where's the duct tape? Like it's I don't know. It's like the Greek, like the Greek families with um, Windex. Windex. Mine's like deep duct tape. All right. I'm imagining you getting the, the the branches to make your hut and just duct no, taping it I together. I would totally make a shelter. And yeah. the hammock, like, oh, no, that's a good I would, one. I is would, duct tape waterproof? It's a not? good one. Uh, the gorilla. Oh, is the pretty, gorilla it is. Yeah, okay. that's pretty solid. I want you on my team. Can we be on the same island? Team Holly? <laughs> yeah. I'll be on Team Holly. Yeah, my team. There we go. Because um, I don't um, have the duct tape. We would have shelter yes. for our, like, for us. Because yes. I think that's a luxury is having a house if yes. you're deserted. And I guess I'm having to go full circle in that thought process. Yeah. Um, duct tape. But I if like you're, that. you know, I think there's a way to build one out of the dirt and the mud and the sticks without tape. Because they didn't have tape a lot of times in those places. And they somehow built shelter. I don't know. I'm waiting to hear this what everybody wants to bring before I decide who I'd want with me if we're allowed to have a break. Mine, mine is selfish. I feel bad. Mine is very... What, what is yours? Well, I don't know because there's no one around. Like The first thing I thought of was like toothbrush and toothpaste. Because oh, I'm like, shoot. I might need Holly on there because I got to borrow her <laughs> toothbrush. <laughs> I'm not giving, no, I'll give you the toothpaste and you're going to use your finger and do it. But literally, <laughs> like, I'm like, that's what I, that's the first thing I thought of is like, I couldn't not brush my teeth. So I'm sorry. Mine's a little selfish and I'm not able to like help build anything. So that's you won't have morning breath in my. So in my, that like, would be okay. my. Right. Yeah, that's my thing I'm doing for you. Okay. What are we talking Wait, what about? Are you freaking hurt right now? <laughs> because she's bringing duct tape and you're just bringing cigars. I'm, I'm bringing housing to the table. <laughs> she's bringing a, a, a like a. So you know, you get inspired sometimes. At least I do. When I'm smoking a cigar, <laughs> and I might 
envision Grab and the design vines. how we're going to create a house this out there. True. All right, we can all you know? be on the island together. Okay. But I just want to know, are we talking about castaway time, like four or five years? Because what's this toothbrush going to look like after? I, know, I mean, it's just going to be like worn we'll turn it down. into a shank after a and while. And when is my tooth? That's where my mind went with Because I don't want it to run out, so I have to ration it. Okay, my mind went with it. Like, I'm going to be stuck on this island, like Tom Hanks, four or five years, and I'm like a wood carving tool. <gasps> Yes. Oh, I mean, I would be, I think, have like, you ever whittled did. before? Right. But you, some wood. Do you know you how to time whittle? on your hand? No. <laughs> you might need band-aids. Yeah, might need band-aids, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, you could do a lot with those tools. My son watches a show where these yeah. guys are you can make bare feet, bare hands, just have some sort of chisel or bare carving hands. tool. Mm -hmm. And are building these incredible, they're building swimming pools, houses, shelter, all kinds of stuff. It's oh. just incredible. I look at my son, I'm like, what are you watching? He goes, this is so relaxing. It's watching people build stuff with their hands. Yeah. And they build everything out of nothing or out of just nature it's incredible so who what's needs the name of the day? show this is i don't even know what it's called i don't know hmm. he calls it underground so, people i think you're, you're gonna you're gonna exactly have to text it called. to me later okay yeah. if it's that relaxing this i do like funny. engineering he engineering. says it's relaxing for me it kind of gives me anxiety watching how fast they're moving with their hands because as you guys may know or we've talked about before i've called, i've had carpal tunnel in my hands and i've had surgery recently so anytime i see somebody really working with their hands whether it be cutting hair or building something with their hands or something all of a sudden i start having that it's weird it's like maybe mentally or psychologically like but i have like response? that that pain feeling automatically comes to my hands even though i've had the surgery already and it's been a few years but yeah but this so for me good. it's not relaxing to watch but anyway i like these i hope that we get more questions like this because it's fun this so, is really fun okay, i'm learning okay, so we're gonna learn about these teams so yeah I don't know, duct tape. I mean, I don't know about the <gasps> duct tape, but I'll take you there. Toothbrush or the what the hell? Wood carving tool. Just picking the toothbrush. I you, can make, you can make. He's yeah. picking the toothbrush. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can make a toothbrush and a wood carving tool. I'll share my toothpaste. Uh, <laughs> I'll share my toothpaste. But I would want to bring Holly instead of me too, so I don't. Oh, so. you guys, I love you. Well, so it's funny in that same like vein of thought, we did have another question that I thought would be a great idea for us to actually do a actual podcast on because it's a little bit more involved um and this i know is a hot topic as soon as i say it you're all gonna know it. like if you are once you're divorced how do you handle religious education and upbringing and there's so much that goes along with that um and i'm i'm assuming the question had to was more along the lines of maybe the two people aren't in sync with maybe they're not the same religion because if they were the same probably that would be a little simpler but if they're not or the same and one doesn't practice or yeah doesn't take or they it just one of them and, is yeah. like you know what i don't see a need for that and one of them's like it's like my life you know so so i think um i think it's a great topic on you know how first of all i thought of the legal aspect you cannot the judge can't say hey you have to be christian or you have to be jewish or you you know you have to be muslim they're not going to ever do that or you can't practice at all so um well, legally those, those Jeff, questions the only go things, to the legal custody right but, go ahead no, like you, the only thing I was thinking is, you know, during your parenting time, as long as you're not hurting a child, you know, um, you know, does someone even have a legal right to say, I don't want you to take them to that place of worship or how does oh, that work? It depends. It depends. So in most, most cases where parents are, are separated or divorced and, or it's a custody situation, most parents have a joint legal custody. And within legal custody is religion, is mm -hmm. schools, mm -hmm. is different things that we've talked about in the past on our show. Uh, and, and really, the two parents should be able to agree. In the event that they don't agree, then a judge decides. Now, if one parent has sole legal custody, then they can make the decisions regarding religion and school and, and, and medical care and all of that stuff. But otherwise, the two parents should really be try to be on the same page or have an understanding. Like, listen, when our son or daughter or children are at your house, they could do this. When they're at my house, they do this. Or whatever historically you had practiced or they'd brought up with until that time of divorce maybe would continue. But there may be situations to where you had a child together, maybe we're never married or lived together, or you got divorced or separated when the child was really young. And in that case, I see that being more of an issue. But people that get a divorce when their kids are a little bit older and have already established a pattern, usually they, they stick with that. They might want to introduce the other parent might want to introduce their own religion, but I don't really see it litigated too much. I don't see it as a huge issue now where it could become a bigger issue. And I think you touched on this a little bit is with schools, religious schools. 
that's a bigger issue that I see rather than simply because usually if it's a um, Sunday morning mass or, or or whatever service it is, um, depending on the religion, usually if it's your parenting time and you want to go and take your child with you, you take your child with you. And, and I don't think that's necessarily disputed too heavily, maybe in some rare situations or cases. But usually it comes down to schools. If somebody wants to send somebody to a religious school, we can get more into that. But that's usually where, at least in my experience, in divorce and, and custody cases, that's where I see it being a bigger dispute or to where it could ultimately come before a judge to make a decision on that. Yeah, there's so many things. Like you said, age of the child is important because if they're younger, you know, you want them to be exposed to. Like I know for me, like my my faith is really important. I want my kids to have that. I think that people, if faith is important, you kind of typically want that. And so, but as they get older, you know, if they're teenagers and they're like, hey, this is kind of where I'm at, you know, you, you it's a struggle with teenagers on everything. So it's almost like kids probably would get, I would assume, a say in what they're thinking, especially if they're going here with dad, here with mom, you know, hey, I'm liking this, I'm liking this route a little bit more. Can you respect that kind of a thing? And then again, it's it's just like everything else in divorce. If you if you have kids, you love your kids, your kids really should come first. You know, you don't want to make them feel like they're being pulled like a rubber band. That's that's not no. fair. So you just try to make it easier for them. If they have an, a you know, proclivity one way, then great. If not, you know, you just you try to make it so it's not so stressful for them, I would think. You know? Yeah, you know, something else too where it comes up is actually regarding holidays, religious big. holidays. Big. That's that's a big issue, and that's something that that we sometimes get calls, unfortunately, from people who had already been divorced in the past and didn't think about including that in their judgment of divorce for their schedule, the holiday schedule. Um, we try to have our clients think about that initially before coming to some sort of agreement. Now, there's always some sort of default provision, but for example, if one parent's Jewish and the other one's Christian. Um, sometimes we can have, there's a way to balance out or at least try to balance out the holidays. Now, sometimes there's holidays such as Halloween and somebody willing to trade that for a religious holiday or not. And sometimes people are, but it's kind of a balancing game, but it's also, I tell my clients, listen, be respectful of the other parents, um, desires and to have certain holidays, um, that they may observe with the children. And if you don't observe it and it's not a big deal to you, then fine. But then again, I've done divorces for people who who maybe are not Christian, don't celebrate Christmas, but Christmas has been an important tradition regardless. And, and they look at it as more a secular holiday. And so they still want that day and there's ways to alternate it and stuff like that. But usually what we do is, assuming each parent's a different religion and in those days or holidays are important to them, Usually, I, my advice is be respectful of that parent, and if they want, you know, your your child on that day, try to make it work. And and there's no reason to end up spending thousands of dollars in court to have a judge tell you guys what to do about that. Right? Is, is try to figure it out. And sometimes we put in there that maybe whoever the mediator was involved in the case that before filing a motion, you would go back to the mediator who could try to hopefully talk some sense into the two parents to try to reach some sort of compromise on that. Um, but that, that is another one. In addition you can't become bad. Like divorce is, it usually is I, maybe not for, in my experience from what I've heard talking to people, it's very combative. So you almost have to like put the swords down and realize like you're coming out of the process. This isn't something we want to fight about. This is our kids. Yeah. This is their upbringing. We need to, now we're done with the divorce. Okay. We've, it's done. And now we need to kind of work together for the better, better yeah, the kids, like, like shifting that mindset, yeah. you know, and, and really getting people on the same page to say, you know, it's about the kids again. Exactly. And besides the, the money part, I know I brought up the money part is that you're spending a lot of money, but then the day you're right. What are your kids going to think? Ultimately, you really shouldn't be discussing it with your kids. But if your kids are in the middle of this whole battle and unfortunately, a lot of times they do end up doing the only damage that's causing to children. And mm -hmm. a lot of times I see parents go at it with each other over religion. And maybe they're using religion as an excuse just to battle the other parent. And it's not really something they've sat down and thought about is how hard is it worth fighting over? Is it something usually each parent's going to do what they want during their own time. 
Um, and that's I, not something you want to fight about. If you're truly focused on your faith, like what kind of an example are you even being to your kid? You know, like let's we're talking about it. Usually all religions are different, but the tenets are kind of the same. Be good to people, right? Treat people well. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the basic be good to people. So it's like it's almost like an oxymoron. What message are you sending your kids that you're fighting over being able to push your not push your religion, but, you know, show them your religion? How about you just show them? what it looks like. You know what I mean? So I got to remember that too. That's a really confusing message to give to kids. Like we're fighting over where you're going to go, you know, be a better person. Okay. <laughs> that sounds like a great plan. You know, and, it's not a good idea to fight about that. And I believe, um, I, I don't know if it was you, but someone said that um, a lot of churches, even though they're in the same line of religion, each church speaks to themselves, speaks to their flock differently. Absolutely. And if let's just, for um, argument's sake, Christian, Christian, Catholic, Catholic, they say it's the same, but they want two different churches. One may be a little more extreme mm -hmm. in their thinking, a little more older ways, and mm -hmm. the other one's a little more relaxed. Right. That may cause an issue, too, because you really want the faith to be strong and rooted in. The other one's like, well, I do believe. So how, how would that conflict get resolved? So I just, something just popped into my head because obviously I am divorced and typically when you get divorced, you leave your, a lot of times you leave the church that you're in. You just do um, nothing against the church. You just do. And you each go to a different church. So what I, I, I was never a church hopper. I kind of became a church hopper. Like I felt like I was always going somewhere different. And my goal was really just to find where do the kids want to be? So um, their dad had found a church and they were going with him on his weeks and they were going with me on my weeks. And they kind of started telling me, mom, I mean, we are the same religion. So it was much easier, I think. But they were like, mom, we really like that church because they just had like this great kids program and they really, it spoke to them. So I had to just go, you know what? Why would I, they're, if they're make, putting down roots there, this is what I want. They're loving the message. They're making friends there. Why am I not letting them we only seen these kids once a week. So I actually did switch where I was going and I started going to that church. Um, great place. And the kids, because they really loved it. And then when they got a little bit older and they weren't as involved in the youth group anymore, I kind of, you know, now I'm going somewhere where I really, I chose for myself. But I kind of just did that because it was like, it was a great church. Um, but it was like they, I could, I could watch them and I could see this is where they're gravitating. And it's a, it's a great place. So that's how, just kind of How fun. did you work out that conversation with your ex-husband saying, Hey, can I come join your church? So I really just said to the kids, I said, do you think it's strange if I go to the same church as your dad? Now they had four services. So I kind of knew that we weren't going to the exact same service and it was such a huge place. It was no big deal. And the kids were like, mom, dad doesn't care. And I was like, okay. Cause I wanted to be respectful of that. Like you found mm -hmm. this place. I don't want to just, you know, come in and make it weird. So no, he was, um, he was fine with it. And we, you know, I, it was such, like I said, so many people, I don't even think I ever really saw him at church. So it was no big deal. And we, we were able to just, but again, the kids kind of were the ones that directed that. I think that's great. Cause uh, you really got, especially the kids are the ones that are probably being dragged through the mud the mm -hmm. most, you know? So when you let them steer the ship, yep. so to speak on that, that's a really, they feel like they're getting some kind of, you know, they feel like their whole life has been torn apart. Sometimes they're losing their school or they're losing this. They're losing their home typically for sure, unless, you know, one of the parents keeps the home. So it is nice to have something where they feel like they have some say in because they do feel very out. Of, that's one thing kids will feel out of control. I don't have control of what's happening to me. So yeah. it is nice if they do get if you can help them throw them a bone, you know, give them a little sense. Especially of, when they have a good youth group. Too. Yeah. Youth I groups mean. to me, any youth group in any church um, situation, when you have a group of kids that they can kind of come together with, it's really nice. And um, so, yeah, so that was kind of where I fell back on that. So when, when it does become an issue and after the divorce, if there is that, uh, what's, what is a spouse's uh, path to try to get it remedied? You know, is it mediation? Do you have to go in front of the judge? You just, you know, it just, most judges are going to want you to have gone to a mediator first um, to see if you could resolve it. And depending on the agreement, depending on the lawyers involved, depending on, on the relationship, a lot of times it's usually best to go to a mediator first. It's going to try to help you resolve these differences and come to some sort of compromise. And, you know, mediators always say, and I'm a mediator myself as well, but mediators always say that if, if both parties leave equally unhappy, then that usually means that's the, the, the right result. Because if you go in front of a judge, one may end up being 
extremely unhappy. Another one might be fine with extremely unhappy one. Guess what they're going to do? They're probably going to appeal it and it's just going to drag out forever. And you're going to spend even more money and you're going to be in court until your kids graduate high school. And, and at the end of the day, you're going to have to deal with each other for your whole life. If you have kids together, there's other things past high school. There's colleges, graduations, weddings, uh, grandchildren, all kinds Mm -hmm. of stuff. So you're going to have to get along. So at, it, the the important thing is, it, no, I know, but you know most people I know do you strive, end up you strive yeah. for it, yeah, yes, because it's a life bond, and you should. When you have kids, you should, and and sometimes it takes a little longer than other situations, but in almost every situation, you have to remember that eventually you're gonna get along again, and you're gonna have to for your kids. So how much damage do you want to do fighting right now? And sometimes it's inevitable, and and unfortunately it gets out of control, and people end up fighting a lot but we try to stress that to our clients and people we talk to is listen there's there's another way of trying to achieve the goal of co-parenting and do it in a way that that is not going to be harmful to your children and make you go broke Mm -hmm. and some people are receptive to that and some people aren't and they don't care and they continue to want to fight over every single thing but back to your question yeah usually um they're encouraged to see if their lawyers can't work it out amongst themselves with the parties and to go to a mediator. And then ultimately, if you can't, then the judge has to call a shot. But usually a judge doesn't want to call shots regarding the children because they usually don't know enough about you and your children and about your family. And that's why, you know, they might send it to the referee at the front of the court to do some sort of investigation and then maybe issue a recommendation. It might be going to mediation where a mediator can really get to know you they're still not going to know you as well as you know yourself and you know the other parent, you know the kid, but they can get to know it a little bit better. It's a more of an informal mm-hmm. context. Now with schools, and we've done shows on schools before and changing schools, but with and then with religious schools, um, that's something that the two parents can't agree on. It's, again, a legal custody question. Ultimately, you go in front of a judge. And the way I've seen some of these compromises made is that the parent that wants the, if it's a religious school, the religious school or the private school, offers to pay all the tuition and then maybe make some other sort of trade-off, maybe offers the other parent more summer parenting time or something in order to reach a compromise. And ultimately, if it goes before the court, the court would set it for a hearing. There's a whole bunch of different factors you got to try to argue and prove. And and it could take, like we said in the past, it could take six months, could take a year, could take even longer depending on the court's schedule and uh, depending on all, all the evidence you have and the hearing dates available and all of that. But in most of those situations, I see some sort of compromise reach. CC. No, I, I, when you brought up the financial aspect of certain schools, those can get pricey depending on where you live. And if that parent is really gung ho, there's, there's, um, you have Christian schools, the Catholic schools, the Lutheran schools. We have amazing schools around here, all in that caliber. (laughs) And, there is a financial um, bill that yeah. comes with that bad boy. So if the parent really wants yeah. it, yeah. I didn't. It didn't even dawn on me the financial aspect yeah. and that investment in your kid. Mm-hmm. Are you sure this is what you want to do? Mm-hmm. And if they put the money down, go. Yeah. This is what yeah. I want. Yeah. That may make the other parent take a step back. Go and, okay. Yeah, and even with non-religious private schools, also. But sometimes, most of the time, a judge isn't really going to force somebody to start paying tuition if they're in a good public school district or they agree but if it's somewhere where the child has already been in that private school and both parents had contributed then one's gonna stop all of a sudden the judge might force them to keep it or it might be different because they can't afford to anymore and then they're gonna have to figure out a different um uh situation on how it's going to be handled Mm -hmm. but but that's all important i've seen situations where even in cases that that um both my own clients cases or cases i've mediated where a private school or religious school might be important to one of the grandparents. And the other parent might say, hey, you know what? I'm cool with it as long as they put their money where their mouth is and they pay. Well, how can you really force a third party to be able to pay and the grandparent being that that third party to pay for your children's tuition? Well, sometimes there could be something in there to where you know, there's going to be a trust account established for the or a separate account established for the purpose of the children's tuition and money will be deposited in it six months before the school year. For example, I'm giving a hypothetical here. One of the examples I've seen 
And if it's not in there six months before, and it has to be six months before, so you have enough time to get them into another school if the money's not going to be there to guarantee that that our child's going to go to that school. So there's all different kinds of creative solutions. But these are things that sometimes when you're sitting in a mediation with a mediator, a mediator can help throw out creative ideas. And if one of them thinks it make, makes sense, then you can expand upon it and figure it out. Whereas usually a judge, most of the time a judge is too busy and doesn't know enough about your specific case to throw out a creative idea. And some judges are, and, and they will throw out a creative idea or, or or impose it or get somebody to think about it. But um, that's why it's important to talk about it and talk about it with your lawyer and 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 see. And because there's all different scenarios. I mean, we just gave a few examples, but I, I all different really scenarios. I really like everything you said, and I really appreciate the person who posted this question mm -hmm. to us because it opened up. I didn't even think about the school, the trust, very valid points. And I really like the idea of that, having that open communication of where, and actually not where, I want to say investing in your children mm -hmm. and their future and what each parent wants. This is a great question. It's I'm a great glad. question. And I mean, you know, I just, we, I know we want to thank our listeners um, yes. for tuning into us and it, whether you, you know, you tune in or this is your first time tuning in your 10th time. Make Silly sure you hit question. that, yeah, hit that, <laughs> hit that red subscribe button. So you're going to get more from us and also send us some questions. You can just put them right below in the YouTube, send the questions. We're happy to answer it. I think it, I think it adds a, a fun little dimension. I enjoy it. Well, so anything we'll with duct tape, let's do it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. that sounded bad. <laughs> <laughs> but surviving on an island, how about yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. So send, send those questions in, like us, subscribe us, and uh, we will look forward to seeing y'all next time. Have Thank a great you. one, guys.